Hey everybody, let's talk about partition evolution in this uh, gnarly lesson time. Now, partition evolution is a feature that is unique to Apache Iceberg, and it does have to deal with the way that the metadata is written. So other table formats oftentimes track how the table is partitioning at sort of the top level metadata. It doesn't necessarily make additional tracking of the partitioning at the file and you know, a different other at other level. So that way it can track multiple partitioning schemes. This is what's unique about Apache Iceberg that, you know, what the partitioning values are and what the partitioning scheme of any particular file and any manifest is actually tracked in the stats for those manifests in those files. So in that case, you can have data files with multiple that have different partitioning schemes applied and be able to plan using both partitioning schemes. That's that this is again, unique and exists because of the specific design in Apache Iceberg. And this, uh, this basically enables some very, very unique benefits. So traditionally what happens is that partitioning means that you write, you physically segregate the data. So there's, you can sort or cluster the data, which just means, hey, you say, hey, let's sort all the users by their first name. Okay, so then, you know, you might have a file that has all the people with the first name that starts with A and B, but they may still be in the same file. They're not physically segregated into separate files. Partitioning takes this a step further and says that unique values are physically written to different files and physically located in a different place. So traditionally the way it's done is that you'd have a folder, a subfolder within your, your uh, table directory for each partition. So in that example where I partition by you know name, let's say we did it by the first letter of a name, everybody with the first name uh, with a letter A would be in a separate partition than everyone, and we've written the separate data files than everyone with a partition, uh, a first letter of B. Okay, so you'd, and you usually would do this because maybe people oftentimes query based on that. So for example, if I'm constantly searching, hey, I'm gonna look for all the students who have a first, you know, whose name starts with B, these are the types of query patterns that I'm executing, then basically a engine can then say, hey, I only need to scan that partition because that's going to be the only chunk of this data that's relevant and you can skip everything else. And this can be very, very good. Okay, it can be very bad if it doesn't. So for example, if I'm doing a, a, a full table scan, basically the partition table is probably going to be a little bit slower because I'm going to have more data files because I could probably have consolidated some of the data across fewer data files if I hadn't partitioned the table. So you might, if I'm doing a full table scan, it could actually result in a lower, a longer scan. So again, partitioning is one of those things you have to kind of really think through when you want to do it. And it's very easy to make mistakes. So then what happens is what happens when you make a mistake or what happens if the way you're partitioning doesn't work anymore, you would have to rewrite the whole table because the way the engines understood the partitioning was through subfolders. It was like, okay, well, these subfolders are the partitions. So in that case, you know, if I want to have to change the way I partition the table, I need to change the way those like folders are tracked, the way it's tracked in the metadata. It, it required a complete rewrite of the table. But with Apache Iceberg, it's able to track the history of partitioning of the table and track what data files and what manifests, uh, what sort of partitioning uh, scheme was applied to them. So that way, when it, when it basically you run a query, it can then take advantage of the partitioning of the particular files, the way those particular files were partitioned to then weed out those files. So it can create separate plans based on the data that was written with this partitioning scheme will apply this plan. And the data that was written with this partitioning scheme will apply this plan because I had the metadata to figure that out. So in this case, you can change. And sort of, so in the example you see on the screen, we go from month partitioning to day partitioning. All future data is segregated by day. So you know each day's files are in separate files. Um, but I didn't have to rewrite all the old data. Now I, I can, I can always do compaction, what's also referred to as rewriting data files. And when I do that, it will apply the new partitioning scheme, but I don't have to do that upfront. There's no upfront cost in changing my partitioning and trying to figure out what the right partitioning is. So hopefully uh, this gives you some insights into what partition evolution is and the benefit of it. Um, I'll see you on the next one.